Good morning, Berean. It's uh, good to see you on this, our Lord's Day. And uh, we've had a little bit of a trying time this morning. Those tuning in uh, with us on the internet, we just want to thank you for being a part of our worship this morning. We've had a we had a power outage in the area, and uh, the power just came on about 10 minutes ago. So we're kind of scrambling, trying to get everything up and functioning. But it's good to have you this morning. Good to see you here in the sanctuary as well. Those of you who are looking online, we just want to thank you for being a part of our worship on this our Lord today. Well, it is our second. Missions Emphasis Sunday of 2021. We're excited uh, to hear from uh, some of our missionaries this morning, and uh, we, we can't wait to get an update on Carver Bible College uh, and uh, with the new president, uh, Dr. C.L. Jordan. We want to thank God for him and his wife here being with us this morning. Uh, last time in our Missions Emphasis Sunday, we, we, were, we had it on Zoom, so we weren't able to have our missionary in-house. Well, this morning we have him in-house, and so we're very thankful for that, uh, to have an in-person Missions Emphasis Sunday. So why don't I open a word of prayer? Uh, time is obviously a little bit shorter today because we're behind, but uh, we want to make sure to give uh, Dr. Jordan as much time as he needs to give us a good update on what's going on with Carver Bible College uh, since uh, the uh, tragic loss of their president, our uh, beloved friend, uh, but uh, we know that this, the school is going on and doing has some great plans, and uh, they need our help to do make those plans work, and so we want to know how we can be involved as a church to help them to become a, the great institution God wants them to become. Let's bow in a word of prayer as we uh, prepare our hearts this morning. Heavenly Father, we do want to give you thanks for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for getting the power back on. We appreciate that, and we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to have a good a good opportunity to have a wonderful Missions Emphasis Sunday. I thank you for Dr. Jordan, his lovely wife. I thank you for Carver Bible College and all this it's meant to us throughout our history. We pray, Lord God, as we get an update on where things are and where they want to go in the future, that you would give us some clarity on how we can pray and how we can labor with them to accomplish your will. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you welcome Dr. Jordan uh, this morning? Thank you, Pastor Skeppel. Um, we um, thank the Lord for um, this day and for all you guys' children and this opportunity to come and share uh, on the behalf of Carver um, Bible College. And we, um, it's been it's been a while since we we've been at Berlin. Um, We've um, had opportunity to be with you before on a, uh, on a missions emphasis week. I think it's been probably more than 10, 11 years uh, since I've represented Carver here. Um, but we thank, thank God for um, just the, the, the opportunity. Um, Pastor Keppel has come and, and he has um, been with us in a men's conference at least one time, maybe twice, but at least one time. Uh, uh, up in the Red Top Mountain area some years ago. And so we, we just thank the Lord for him, and we um, thank the Lord for his wife, uh, Teresa, and we, we, our prayers are, are with her. And uh, we, um, our families go back a ways uh, from Kansas City, uh, where her parents and my parents worked in a Christian school there, Carver Christian Day School, in fact. And uh, for, for some years there, both my parents worked at that particular school. and. Um, our brothers actually were classmates at Carver, uh, her younger brother Robert, I think, and my brother Corey uh, were classmates there. <clears throat> and so, and then Berin, uh, we had opportunity some years ago, I had an opportunity um, to meet uh, Pastor Connolly uh, when I think you guys were on Camelton. <clears throat> and, um, and so we had an opportunity to meet him. We've had good friends that have come through here, Howard and Deborah Brown, some of you may remember the Browns there in Delaware now, and um, uh, Wallace Francis, of course, and Cheryl are friends of ours, and and we had another friend from Kansas City who moved um, some time ago in the late 80s, uh, was here at Berean for a short period of time. Some of you may remember uh, Lynn Gant. And then um, I've served with um, Brother Dixon uh, on the, the board at Carver, so so I'm quite familiar with, with Berean. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of connections and a lot of a lot of friends, yes. So, we, um, I, I, um, I want to just um, give you a little, little personal history about myself and how uh, I came to to Carver. 
Um, my family has been supporters of Carver for over 40 some odd years. Um, we, um, and so we've, we've been real f uh, familiar with Carver. Um, uh, the late uh, Reverend Dr. Crummy and I met uh, in Marietta, Georgia at, at my home church uh, some years ago uh, when he came, uh, he'd come over there to, to preach a uh, sermon. And he and I became friends, we've been friends, our wives became friends, and we hung out uh, quite a bit, his first wife, um, and um, we just became real good friends. Uh, she deceased, and then uh, his second wife, and my wife became real good friends, and we just kept the, the relationship. Uh, I, I uh, was asked to uh, join the board of Carver <clears throat> in 2000 and, uh, 2008, um, so I'd served on the board uh, at Carver since that time up to his, his death. It's a long story on how, um, what God was doing with me and dealing with me during the time prior to uh, President Crummy's death. President Crummy, his, um, his desire, heart's desire was to get me back to Atlanta. I had gone and, um, after pastoring for 10 years in Cartersville, left to go pastor a church in Louisville, Kentucky, and he always used to tell me that you should have never left Atlanta. And so he was trying to get me back. He had my resume on his computer for 17 years. And in 2019, he asked me, can I, can I, can I now send your resume out? Um, because I would always tell him, God's not calling me back to Atlanta uh, yet. And if he's going to call me back, then, you know, we, but we started to feel the move that God was, gonna, was calling us away from Louisville didn't know exactly what God was, was saying or doing, but we, uh, I had this um, um, urge from the Lord that God was calling me uh, back into, or, or calling me back to the Atlanta area, but didn't know exactly what. Uh, at the time, I started thinking, well, God, you're moving me to missions and training. And so I so said, well, we'll start working on building our men's and women's conference back up in the Atlanta area. Uh, President Crummy was instrumental in helping me uh, put some things together to try to get that done. Just didn't know exactly. I came to Atlanta, had a bunch of brothers come with me, met, met with me on Delk Road at uh, Cracker Barrel to pray with me to see exactly what God was saying to me. I felt really, really strong that God was moving me back to Atlanta and to um, back into full-time ministry again, but just didn't know where. Um, and so I went back to Louisville and was um, trying to figure this thing out and um, President Crummy had called me and spoke to me and said, have you decided, you understand it? No, nope, I don't know what God is calling me to do. Well, um, in December of uh, 2019, a missionary friend of ours who was on furlough from Zimbabwe um, um, had come and preached for me. And, and after, well, just before his sermon, he told me obedience, I'm sorry, home is where your obedience is. Our obedience, home is where your obedience is, right? And so I knew then that his sermon was about me. And so I, I began, he, he preached from the 11th chapter of Hebrew. And I said, well, Lord, wherever you want me, you want me to stay or you want me to go? Um, if you, you're telling me to stay in Louisville, I'm staying in Louisville. Are you telling me to go somewhere, wherever it is, you tell me I'm going. So we ended up um, just a few weeks after that, uh, our beloved president passed away. Um, and then uh, through a series of other things happening, um, God made it clear um, in a place that I didn't want to be. I wanted to be in Atlanta, but I didn't want to be a Carver. Um, and I remember having a conversation with the Lord in a board meeting. There were some other things that went on. I, I don't have time to tell you where I said no to the Lord. And I said, nope, I'm, there's no way I'm coming here. So um, anyway, you don't ever tell the Lord no. And, uh, and I'm learning that where you don't want to be most of the time is where he wants you to be. And so don't tell him. So I try not to tell him, Lord, I will never go to Alaska. Um, so I like warm weather. And so <laughs> anyway, Carver, let me just um, tell you, um, you know, my wife and I started off here in the 80s. Uh, we're, we're from natives of Kansas City, Missouri. We started off here in, in the 80s, late 80s, and, uh, and ministering. And God took us away to Louisville. During that particular time, uh, well, before that time, we had worked in missions a little bit, worked with Babby Mason and Charles Mason and some others uh, in sending um, aid uh, to Uganda uh, and, and actually sending people, missionaries to Uganda. So we worked a little bit uh, with them. The Lord called me to Louisville 
And I always said, listen, uh, I'll stay on this side of the ocean and, and we'll send people, we'll help the send, but I'll never go. And so we, we went to Louisville and the Lord changed all of that too. Again, so you don't tell the Lord no, what you're going to do. So I ended up making two trips to Ethiopia, first trip with my wife and four trips to Zimbabwe teaching there with the Southern Baptists. And um, so anyway, and we've worked in the last six years with the Navajo Indians uh, in Dilcon, Arizona. I'll tell you a little bit about that at the end of this to maybe uh, extend an invitation for you to come and work with us. But we're at Carver now. Carver is, um, Carver, uh, I can tell you, uh, we, we, we've been here since, uh, we got here January 28th. Um, Carver is in a bit of transition. We need your prayers. We, we um, formulated a prayer group uh, back in September or October. We meet every Wednesday morning at 6 uh, 30 in the morning uh, to have prayer and to pray for Carver and um, that God will continue to work through Carver. You know, for almost 80 years, uh, Carver has been in existence and it started well before. So I went back and, you know, I'm reading the history and, and looking at the, um, uh, the book that uh, Dr. Hunger Pillar wrote on um, um, Like a Tree Planet, I think it is. But anyway, we're reading the history of that and how God used the pains um, so many years before um, even the prayer um, that, um, that was given to bring about education here in the Atlanta area. And so I had an opportunity to just go back and read and see what God was doing so many years ago so that we'd understand how we fit in the puzzle of what God is doing. You know, um, Henry Blackaby, I'm sure all of you uh, probably have uh, been in it, uh, or at least aware of his study on experiencing God. But, you know, the thing that Henry says is that God is always working. And uh, when God is working, we need to find out where God is working. And God, when, he, when we find out where he's working, he's going to ex extend an invitation for us to join in to his work. And then, of course, we come to those roads of crisis of belief, and we have to make those adjustments and then be obedient. And then once we're obedient, we find that we're having, or we, we, um, we have that experience with God, that true experience with God. And so um, God was working in Carver so many, many years ago. And so we're trying to just look at what God was doing, what God has done throughout the years, and what it is that God wants to do now with Carver. So what we're trying to do is to find not our vision, but find God's vision for the school. So uh, in the meantime, let me just tell you what's going on. We're in the midst of selling the old property there on Cascade Road. Um, I know that there was um, some, uh, some chatter among Carver uh, alums when the school moved from Nelson Street to uh, the current location. However, the current location is, um, is a bit insufficient for our needs, and um, it, it has some, uh, a lot of problems there on the campus, and so we are... Uh, we're def desperately trying to sell that particular campus and uh, seeking a campus that will be conducive for for uh, a learning environment and for future expansion. Uh, so that's where we that's where we are uh, currently. Um, we also Carver, as you know, in the past has been accredited. So we're working on accreditation again. Accreditation. We're trying to get that. Uh, we're just about uh, ready to submit our pa paperwork for that. Um, and working on our self-studies and things of that nature to, um, to uh, submit to ABHE. And so uh, we're looking forward. We should know something by July, um, whether we are back at full candidacy status or, or whether we're in affiliate uh, status. Either way, we get a chance. It offers us the opportunities to do the things that we need to do in, er in order to further um, the goals of the institution. And so uh, some of our other goals um, would be after accreditation is to, to receive Title IV funding. So we had Title IV funding at one time, so our students would be able to come and uh, receive financial aid. And so um, uh, we're working. We've been uh, recertified by the state of Georgia. Um, once we get our accreditation, then we're able to, to hopefully with the Department of Ed, reestablish our Title IV funding. What does that do for us? Well, that gives us an opportunity to recruit. 
um, students a little better and, um, and students have an opportunity to receive uh, financial aid. And so uh, we're, we're in the midst of doing that. That, that would increase our recruitment and that would help uh, Carver also to be a little bit more self-sufficient financially. And so that's one of the things that we're, we're hoping um, to accomplish. And then the other thing is, uh, is that Carver's never had an advancement team. Um, so the president, um, it's my job to make sure that funds are raised, but um, to do that in an efficient way, you need a team that will come alongside of you and working together. So we're, we're, we're going to be establishing a team, hopefully a team that will not just be um, of individuals who live uh, geographically in, in this area, but who, who are spread out, who can tell the story about Carver um, and, and can help us raise funds for, for the institution. The other thing is that we, we want to, our other goal is to rebuild our biblical studies program. And so um, we, we offer, well, you know, biblical studies is who we are. Um, we're a Bible school. We have not changed that. We're not going to change that. We're committed to inerrancy. We're committed to the truth. Uh, we are not changing who we are. So a lot of times I know when people think about new presidents coming in, which way is the school going, where are they going, we're, we're solid. We're going to be Bible. Um, that's who we are. Every student who comes to Carver, whether they major in our, psych, our psychology program or in our business administration program, ha they have to have 30 hours of Bible. And so every student will minor in Bible when they come to Carver. Okay? And so um, Bible is who we are. That's who we, we remain. We will be um, under, under my leadership. And so the other thing that we're going to do is uh, rebuild our certificate program. So if there's people here today who say, well, you know, I'm, I don't know if I really want to go back and get an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, but I just want to know a little bit more about the Bible. We invite you to come and be a part of our, um, our certificate program. And so we'd like to build that back up. My job is to get out to churches and talk about the certificate program and, um, and try to build that up. And so we're hoping um, to, to have a, a larger um, uh, program in our uh, certificate program. So if you're interested, please let us know. Um, we're also, one of the things we're doing is we're, we are rebuilding our board, rebuilding the board of trustees with skilled professionals, skilled professionals who are biblically sound, okay? So in the past, Carver has had board members who've had a lot of pastors, elders, and deacons, and that's been fine. We, 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 we needed that. Um, um, but we're finding, too, that there are some areas uh, that we, we need some skilled um, people. And so, um, for instance, we've got a brother who hopefully will be joining the board uh, soon who um, uh, has worked with nonprofits, a Christian organization out of Louisville, Kentucky, who's worked many, many years with nonprofits, raising money, uh, things of that, that nature. We also have a, a brother who's currently on our board. He's new to our board. Um, He's not, uh, he's familiar with the Atlanta area. He lives out in San Ramon. He used to live here, actually. Um, is familiar, very familiar with Carver. And has worked for Metropolitan, um, uh, with Metropolitan Life for years and has run uh, about $3 billion worth of their, their real estate. And so he is currently uh, on our board. And so we have some others some, uh, that we're looking at, people who are in banking, people who, who have background in Title IX, uh, um, who have background in financial aid, who will sit on our board and run committees and things so that uh, people who have um, background in higher ed, uh, we've got a young man who we're looking at uh, to coming on our board who's at the University of Missouri. He's assistant um, uh, athletic director there, real good friend of, of mine, um, but um, has a PhD in higher learning, um, higher ed, and he is, um, so we're looking at people like that to strengthen Carver's board, to strengthen the institution, to help us move forward in the, in, in the institution. And a lot of these guys are preachers as well, so we get it both. We get preachers and we get those who have uh, some skill, who are skilled in certain areas as well. We also have a few young ladies who are on the board, mission-minded young ladies, a couple of ladies uh, who, are, um, who are attorneys, um, and then we're looking at a young lady who has, who's a missionary, has been a missionary for uh, probably more than 15, 16 years. Um, and she um, has a, a PhD in leadership 
uh, very familiar with Carver. So we're, we're, we're trying to do some different things with our board. We're bringing a little bit more diversity to the board as well. Uh, one of the brothers is a Hispanic brother. Uh, we have some brothers who are Caucasian, um, bringing some women on the board as well. So uh, we get a, um, a background of skilled people from, from, uh, from missions work to people who work into, in the marketplace who help strengthen Carver. So um, I, we, we want to expand uh, our degree program to include a master's, uh, I'm sorry, missions degree in, um, uh, for, if a student was to come to Carver and, and to get a degree in missions, they can get a concentration in urban missions or in international uh, global missions. And so we're, we're, um, we're looking forward, talking through that, and seeing what that would look like. Um, our academic dean will, will definitely be uh, a part of trying to figure out how we, we establish that. And then um, we shouldn't have a problem getting that approval from our accrediting agency because uh, they are a Bible accredit accrediting institution and missions is part of the biblical mandate that God um, has issued and commanded for the church. Um, and then uh, we, we want to um, do a better job and try to um, rebuild our reputation in the community um, to make sure that, uh, we, that people understand that we are a good witness for Christ. All right? And so how we conduct our business, um, how, how, we, um, uh, how we recruit students, uh, all of that is important. And so we want to make sure. Uh, Proverbs 22 says a good name is to be uh, chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver and gold. And so we want to make sure that we have a good name and that, that people, when they see Carver, they understand that Carver is an institution that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's an institution that promotes the Lord Jesus Christ and promotes the Word of God. Um, one of our final goals would be to establish endowment, an endowment, um, uh, or some endowments for, for the institution. So we're talking now currently with churches who, who um, are familiar with, with Carver and have worked with Carver before um, to create some endowments, some scholarship funds that, that would be there for students for um, and we haven't decided exactly how those endowments would look and for what particular students and, and things, but we, um, we're at least talking about that now. And that's one of the things that we want to do for, for the future. One of the things that, that I, am, um, I am, um, I'm sure of, that, that everything that we do at Carver, um, the Lord gave me this before coming back to Atlanta, it will be by his grace and for his glory. So if you get an email from me, or if you see some literature with Carver on it, from now on, you're going to see that. You're going to see by his grace and for his glory. And so I want to break just for a moment just to see if there are any questions about any of the things that I've just said, any um, questions or concerns. Yes, Elder. What's your present enrollment? Our current enrollment is about, it's under 50. Um, and part of that's due to COVID, part of that's due to some, um, some things that were already going on in Carver. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. So, um, through the pandemic, have you been in person? Has it been Zoom to the cross? What, what do you, what's your, what's your uh, prospects for in person in, 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 in the near future? Right. So we, let me tell you what we've done. We've had to, we've had um, a hybrid. So we've had some um, classes in person uh, and most classes though in, in uh, Zoom. Um, as people are getting their uh, vaccines, we're hoping uh, to move back to our uh, fully having in-person classes. Um, one of the things that we hope to do in the near future is to start online classes uh, just so that we can expand Carver. But um, that's what we're, we're doing currently. Right now on campus, we only have um, about 20 of our students on campus, and that would be our athletes uh, right now. Um, so, and, so um, and we have maybe four classes that have been taught in person. 
we've had to make that adjustment, uh, like like all institutions across the country, across the world. <laughs> we've had to make. It. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Two questions. Has anyone expressed an interest in purchasing the property, and are you considering staying in the same area? Is there another area that you're considering? That's a good question. Yes, we've had several <laughs> offers uh, on the. Um, uh, on the campus, the current campus, um, not all of them are so good. Um, some of them people want, uh, they want cheap, you know, and uh, uh, for a little nothing. But we've had at least um, three uh, good offers, and we are hoping, I, um, there is another place that we're looking at. Um, and I'll just tell you, we're in negotiation uh, in hopes of getting the old Atlanta uh, Point University campus over, over off of Ben Hill. That's what we're looking at. And that's what we're praying about. Um, so we, um, we've been negotiating with them for a while. The negotiations kind of fell um, short. Uh, the owner is a... Um, He's a pastor in, a, in a, an apostolic church, and he wanted to um, he wanted to help Carver. He said, and he wanted to, but he wanted to take the position of president and bring four board members on. The board said there is no way that that's going to happen, and our everybody in Atlanta that is affiliated with Carver would have our head, and our donors would, and so no, we we that's no deal. So what happens is when people think that you are in trouble, they forget the God that we serve. Amen. And, or they don't know, in some cases, the God that we serve. And so we would rather lose everything than to, than to change who we are, biblically. And so we said, absolutely not. So, but we're, we're in hopes of um, reestablishing, well, we are reestablishing contact there, but just on a business, you know, from a business standpoint. So that's what we're hoping to pray for us, but that God would have us where he wants us to. Again, we want God's vision. Uh, people say, well, what's your vision? Man, listen, my, my vision is what God's, my vision comes from the Lord. Uh, too many times we come up with visions, and it's not what God wants. And so that's why I quoted Henry Blackaby, and he said, God is always working. Seek and look find where God is working and God is always extending to us an invitation. When he does, join in. And so we're looking for, for, for God's vision. And you know, when I think about the last week I had an opportunity to preach, I think about, you know, I was talking about Joshua. You know, there were people in the wilderness who had a wilderness perspective and they, that's all they had. That, that first group that came out of Egypt, they just had a wilderness perspective. God already told them where he was taking them. They never could catch his vision. They had their own vision. We were better off here. We were better off there. You know, he should have left us here. And, and God just says, hey, I'm tired of it, you know. And if it takes 40 years to get rid of all of you who are complaining, I'll do it. But Joshua had God's vision. And that's why he could take the people to Canaan and, you know, take them across that last what appeared to be an obstacle, which you never find him saying anything about the Jordan River. You know, we just know that the Jordan River was at a raging uh, stage. Um, and, you know, you, you, you've got to be confident in what God has, has shown. And you have to, you, you know, when you look at God's vision, you get hope. And so that's why I've gone back to say, okay, God, what were you doing uh, back in the 40s? And, uh, and how do we continue um, your vision for Carver? You know, because I want to get us to Canaan. Um, but but I want to do it God's way. Uh, I, it can't be done my way because I will will end up um, in the wilderness. Um, and so that's what that's what we're trying to do. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I'm not really sure what types of courses you offer, but do you all have a program for um, high school students like the dual enrollment? We don't, but that has that that has been on the table um, for us uh, for for a point of discussion. And uh, that's something that we were looking, looking at perhaps uh, uh, developing. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'd like to talk to you about that. All right, good, good, good. Anyone else? 
Any other questions about cars? You know, we, um, you know, we, we want to, we want to be able to be in a position to help um, people. One of the things we're looking at in Car at Carver too is that we're looking to, you know, we want to be able to ex um, to respond to the things that are going on in our in our country. You know, whether it's um, whether it's political division, abortion, uh, the killing of black males, we want to respond with the gospel. We want people, we want our students to be able to respond with the gospel. Listen, we're in a great time right now. The church is in a great period. I don't think we know it. I think we've forgotten. I think we're caught up in a whole lot of stuff that the world has going on on this agenda. But we're in a great opportunity right now to evangelize and to give hope to our country. But I think we've gotten caught up in too much of what's going on. And we, we've got to see the vision of where God has taken us and what he wants us to do. And so with Carver, we have to train men and women for the marketplace as well as for the mission field. But we want people in the marketplace as well. So people, one of the things, and I'll just say this real quickly, when, when I, I just left um, the secular workplace, I had to go back to being bivocational, um, left the uh, church and we replanted, or not replanted, we planted a new church. So I had to go back to, to bivocational studies. Uh, work brother. But anyway, while I was in the secular uh, arena working, um, when I was um, I actually uh, leaving, uh, actually retiring from uh, the state of Kentucky, they a group of my staff, um, you know, had a party for me virtually, and 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 they began to talk about how I ministered to them in the marketplace. One by one, they began to share, and they began to share tears, and I had no idea on the impact that I had made on the lives, lives of my staff. I had about 22 staff. I never, I never knew that. Um, just living out the word of God uh, among the people there uh, in a secular setting. And so we want our students um, to be, uh, those who are going to the marketplace, we want them to live out Christ. Uh, among people and, and, and to give hope to people when they believe that it's a, a hopeless situation. We want our students to help the world know that God is a missionary God, okay? That God was in pursuit of man way before the foundation of the earth and God is still in pursuit of man. So if God is in pursuit of man and we are Christians, then what should we be in pursuit of? People, just like God is in pursuit of people. So if they've got issues, if they're coming across the border, we need to be in pursuit of those who come across the borders. If they've got issues with racism, then we need to be in pursuit of those folks who have problems with racism. If they got political issues, we need to, and they, they think there's no hope because of who's in the office, then we need, we need to provide hope. That's what we need to do. And that's what we want to train the students at Carver to do. If it's our young people in the streets that don't understand what's going on with the police or how to to interact with the police, we want to start raising up a generation of people who understand Christ and who, who, are, who are able to minister to people in every aspect of their lives, no matter what the situation, no matter what the situation. You know, I couldn't, I could care less. I mean, I care, but I could really care less what was going on in a political situation. Why? Because I know who sits high, right? And so, who cares who the president is? How are we as a church going to affect what's going on in the White House? What kind of people? So what Carver has right now a graduate, uh, some of you may know her, Angela Smith, uh, who now works for the mayor. Um, she is now, she is now uh, like the right hand person uh, in, in the mayor's office. So we've got our student, our graduate, who's there to influence, amen? Amen. We've got other students in other places and other areas who are in places of influence. So that's we want to teach our, our students to be courageous with the word of God and living out Christ when they go into the marketplace as well as in the mission field. And so CARP has a great opportunity. We have students who, who are and we have one particular student in South Africa who is a president of a college um, there. Uh, we have students who are school teachers. We have firemen. We have police officers. We have 
guys who are trainers, we have guys who are now playing uh, professional basketball overseas. We, we have a lot of students in a lot of areas who, who, who take the name, bear the name of Christ, but are graduates of Carver. And so uh, we, we ask that you would uh, help us continuously. We want to thank you for all the help that Brynn has, has given throughout the years. We know that Pastor Keppel supports Carver. We know that Pastor Conley in, in years past um, uh, supported Carver, all of his friends. And so we, we thank you for that. Um, and we, we, we want you to just help us um, to uh, continue to train to transform young minds, minds, whether it be young or old, uh, for the marketplace and for uh, the mission field. The last thing I'll share with you about Carver what we hope to do. Now, I, uh, I lead a missions team, gospel love mission team, that has been working with the Navajo Indians for six years. And so we're, one of the things that Carver is hoping to do is to partner. Uh, we're partnering with uh, other colleges. Point University is one of those colleges that we're, we're partnering with, establishing establish a partnership. But um, the Navajo Christian Foundation uh, we're hoping to um, to offer classes out there online for the Navajos and also bring uh, some of the Navajos to Carver. And so uh, we, we've worked with them for a long time. We're also looking to perhaps to get interns from Carver to go work with the Navajo, uh, uh, out there at the Navajo Foundation in Dilcon, Arizona. And so one of the other things that we do, we um, and this is why I wanted to bring in building missions department, at Carver, I personally, in our missions group, we've helped to uh, mobilize African American churches for missions. African American churches were on the forefront of missions way back in the last of uh, the, the last two centuries, and we've uh, uh, we've we've had some issues and some problems that caused us not to be involved in missions um, because of some things that were going on in Africa and different places. Because that was primarily the place that we were, we were going to, uh, to do mission work. Uh, Africa was called the white man's grave, and so black people were going to Africa and sharing the gospel. They start cutting up the, the continent and different things, and they, they stopped our visas and so forth and so on. So we internalized our missions, okay? And so everything went into our communities, into our churches, thus comes the civil rights movement. Comes out of, the, comes out of that uh, kind of a, a process. So, but, but we want to mobilize our missions. Everywhere I go, people are asking, where are our black people from America? Where are they? Um, and so, it's a great opportunity. We invite you, and if you want to know more about that, we can tell you about it. We've got a trip coming up on July the 16th through the 23rd. We'd love to have you come out to Dilcon, Arizona. But we're tying that with Carver as well. So our students will have an opportunity to work in Dilcon and, uh, and to work with the Navajos. Um, and perhaps uh, there's a whole, and I'm just going to say this. I know I'm talking about Carver, but this is this is there is a there is a vineyard that is right, amen, really right out there. And there's a whole nation out there that doesn't know Jesus Christ, and it's open, and they're open. On our way out there, past couple um, about five years ago, um, our, one of our social ministers was going out and he had a truckload of stuff taking it and the truck broke down in Oklahoma City and a lady walked up to him and said where are you going with that stuff and he said we're taking it to the Navajo Nation in Arizona she said oh please why don't you come to our reservation we've got 20,000 Arapaho who haven't heard the gospel in 20 years <laughs> something's wrong with that Something's wrong with that. So the vineyard is right. We need the laborers, which are very, very few. So anyway, um, we thank you for the time. Any other questions before I sit down? There's a question up top. Do you feel that the government funding might in some way start to impact your mission with requirements or rules? Yes. We, um, we, we know that that's a possibility. Um, but we, uh, we've got to keep trusting God. Uh, Carver has existed without government funding for so long. So, um, but we need Christians like yourselves who are committed to supporting 
the school and to tell other people about the school, other Christians as well. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yes, sir. What's the, what's the cost of going to college now? Uh, we're about 24000 I think. Four yes, years? Sir. A year or four years? No, that's for a year. A year, okay. Yes, sir. There was another question? Hands up? No. Anyone else before I said I heard the bell ring? <laughs> Man, nothing else? Well, you got a hand up again? Okay. Oh. Uh, Yes. How many uh, foreign students do you have to cover? How many international students we have? Yes. Man, you know what? I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, we have probably, we have a, a group of Zimbabwe students. I've been to Zimbabwe uh, quite a bit, and uh, I'm happy we have seven uh, from Zimbabwe. I think we have a couple of from the Bahamas, one from Australia, and uh, one from uh, somewhere in Africa. Um, but yeah, so, so we're somewhere between 12, 13 students, international students right now, and I just heard that we're recruiting several of the international students. All right, well listen, I think my time has come to the end. I'm gonna turn it back over to Pastor Skeppel. God bless you, God keep you. Keep you in your way. I had something, I was gonna use white boy who ran out of time there with <laughs> Praise the Lord, wasn't that wonderful? It's great. What a wonderful update. It's uh, good to know that uh, God is uh, doing his work there at Carver. We know that there were some difficult days when President Crummy passed. We all mourned for his, for his passing. We rejoiced, of course, as a believer, but we mourned for his passing in an earthly way. And so uh, we're just really thankful that, that God has brought Dr. Jordan here and uh, thankful for what uh, that means for Carver in the future. And uh, we need to continue to pray for Carver. We, we've prayed for, for Carver from the very beginning, and we want to continue to do so and, uh, and uh, ask that God would um, accomplish his divine intention uh, through that uh, godly institution. Well, I'm going to pray and close us out, and uh, we are so glad again to have power on. We hope uh, we thank you. We thank God for, the, for bringing the power back on so that you can join us over the Internet. And so we're, we're thankful for you being here with us this morning as we've uh, had our Missions Emphasis Sunday. Uh, take some time in between the service uh, to uh, greet Dr. Jordan, his lovely wife, and uh, thank them for being here this morning. And uh, let's, uh, let's uh, keep our minds and hearts focused on the Lord as we worship his great and awesome name. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do want to give you thanks for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to hear about what you're doing in this wonderful institution. We pray, dear God, as they now retool and refocus and uh, just begin the process of moving the institution forward as we pray, Lord God, that they would begin to see the student enrollment increase and involvement increase. We pray that you would supply the funds and the backing and the resource and the, and the individuals to, uh, to give leadership and direction to this great institution. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless it and that you would encourage many people through it, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.